Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey. And we've got a really super special guest today. We have Carrie Knight. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Tom. And Carrie's going to be sharing with us some uh, some really awesome tips. I got a little preview here a while ago, and she's got just some some really really awesome ideas to help us see how to take advantage of in this opportunity we have of a COVID-19 world and how that's kind of changed the cleaning industry and how consumer interest and priorities have shifted because of that and what we need to be doing within our cleaning businesses to uh, actually turn something that's a risk and a challenge into to an opportunity. A um, couple of things I just want to share with you before we, we get too deep into that, just to kind of give you a, a heads up as to some of the things that's going on in the uh, world of um, our federal government. Um, jobless claims came out today, as we've talked about in the past, every Thursday they come out with jobless claims, and this says another million jobless claims show Congress may need to extend extra benefits uh, getting ready to expire. And what they're talking about is the extra $600 a week per, um, you know, individual who's drawing unemployment benefits. We were all looking forward to the end of July when that $600 is currently scheduled to go away and um, thinking that'll make it a lot easier for us to hire. Cause I know a number of us we've talked about in, 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 in past uh, days are really having a hard time finding enough uh, help, hiring enough people to handle the demand that we have. We're uh, demand uh, constrained, if you will. Well, um, that's bad because they're going to do something more. Uh, Jay Powell, the uh, chairman of the Fed, spoke to Congress yesterday, gave testimony to Congress, basically planting the seeds of this, saying that, you know, we've spent $2.2 trillion so far and things are going well. And Main note of uh, retail sales went up 17% month, month over month. And we've got a graph here showing that never have retail sales gone from a number this lousy to a number this big, like in one month, unprecedented. Got that wow, one? Wow, that was early. That was early. Well, it seemed to fit. So we'll check that off, off the list. We have to use unprecedented in every one of these, Carrie. And Sometimes it's a struggle and the sooner we get it out of the way, the better. But <laughs> the reason that happened was in large part because of all the money the federal government's throwing out there. The, um, I guess, personal stimulus checks that a lot of people got, the unemployment benefits. Remember we shared with you that the CEO of uh, Bank of America, or America, is that right? Bank of America there, Bank of America, yeah. Um, yep said that uh, they, they have half the bank accounts in, in, in the country, by the way. And for everybody who's got an account with $5,000 or less in it, it has 40% more money in it now than it did prior to COVID. People are spending that money now. That's what's making the stock market go up. That's what's keeping everybody feeling arguably better about things than what they should. Um, so what's the point of all of this? It's just kind of buckle up and get ready. It might not, we don't know what the rules are going to be, but it doesn't look like that that $600 a week is going to completely go away by the end of July. Now there were discussions about coming up with some way to financially incent people to actually get a job and maybe pay them up to $450 a week if you were unemployed and now you have a job. So there's all kinds of things flying around out there. Before we get done, we're going to show you in um, our resource page on Cleaning Business Today where that link is that shows you how to write your congressman and your senator. And we've done that. We made success. We got the PPP. And I mean, I can't see, you know, we can't take all the credit for that, but we played some small role in notifying our uh, lawmakers that the PPP law, as, as it was written, you know, a few weeks ago, was goofed up and wasn't helping us. And Joe Walsh gave us some templates and and and, and showed us how to how to get into uh, grassroots lobbying, if you will. Um, we need to round the troops up again, and we need to let our lawmakers know that um, we don't. Uh, want as business small business owners we would prefer that they come up with a better solution to help unemployed people rather than to give them a financial incentive not to work 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Tom. I'm glad you're going to share that link again. That's awesome. So, Carrie, <laughs> tell us a little Hi. bit about yourself, Hi. your business, how you got into the industry, and uh, what's going on in your world. All right. First of all, I want to say what you guys do here is incredible. So I didn't want to jump in without saying that. I mean, your commitment to the industry and sharing so much is like so helpful to everyone. So I just wanted to make sure I got that out of the way and said what you guys do is amazing. So. Well, that's very great. We appreciate that. But obviously you haven't watched many of these because <laughs> <it> really <isn't. laughs> No, I have. I have. I watched Paul yesterday. Now Paul is yeah. also. Wow, like, yeah, he was full of value bombs, like all yeah. over the place. It was so much information. Did you, Which did Paul? You have yeah. We had yeah. Paul on Monday. Yeah, Ooh. we had two awesome Pauls this this week. Yeah, this week was all about the Pauls and oh, everything. Was amazing. Right, Thursday. Uh, Yesterday was Paul August. Yeah, and on Monday was Paul Freed. Oh yeah, Paul Freed. I missed his. Okay. Oh, I got that was fun. really good too. Yeah. Oh, Facebook oh. Live. Oh, check it out. But yes. you never really miss it. You just go to uh, our Facebook page and it's still yeah. there. They, say, yeah. they, they live forever. They live forever. Yeah. <laughs> fair warning. <laughs> All right. Yeah, fair warning. Watch what I say. All right. So about me, um, I'm going to keep it brief. It's a little boring. Um, I actually heard not boring. <laughs> I actually purchased an existing cleaning business back in 2007. Um, my kids were little back then. So I needed this, what I thought was a business that was going to allow me to be more of a mom than being an employee, right? Like, so I had this misconception that, oh, I'll have all this free time. So uh, I bought an existing business and kind of just jumped in. I mean, I don't, the reason I chose the cleaning industry is because it had the repeat revenue stream. I, I really liked that I didn't have to go out and find a customer. Like, let's say like if you chose like a painting company, you get a client and then you got to fill your funnel and find another client. So I liked that the industry had repeat revenue. Um, so for me, it was, it was really a good fit, but that was right at the beginning of the economic crisis, like the crash that happened. And so Florida was hit really hard. Um, other areas were too, like Las Vegas, um, some parts of California, but like in Florida specifically, it was, um, it was overnight, like things went from being really good to being really bad, like overnight. And so my business that I purchased within three months was nearly non-existent. Like everything had dried up in about three months. So I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, you're, you don't know what you're doing when you buy a business and you're, you're in it for three months. So I, I literally had to figure everything out. So I spent a ton of money on marketing thinking like, okay, I've got to like, I got to spend money to make money. That's what everybody tells me. So I better do all this advertising. So again, I had no idea what I was doing, but I spent $30,000. I had a plan. Like I, got my working capital. Let me spend my money on print advertising because everybody says advertising works. It didn't work. So um, essentially I lost all that money. And I think within one year we had literally run out of money. Like all the money I borrowed to buy the business and to put into the business was gone. So now I'm feeding, I'm feeding the beast. Like, and we've all had the beast, right? We've all, yeah. Absolutely. The beast. Yes. <laughs> and I was, I, I remember the last draw was I had to empty my 401k and that was just to make payroll. So it was like payroll's due on Friday. I have, I don't have any money to pay people. So I literally had to go tap into what was left in my 401k and that's how I got by. That was really about it. So of course I listed the business for sale, a, a failing business. Like who's going to want to buy a failing, struggling business. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I never sold the business because again, who's going to buy a struggling, failing business. So I had to figure it out and there were a lot of things I had to figure out. 
I mean, and one of the things that many people don't figure out for much later is that your employees are the biggest asset in your company. And if you don't take care of them, you cannot take care of your customers. So when I finally figured that out, like that's when all the formula all kind of started to reveal itself. And I mean, it took me, well, it took me a long time to, to get where I finally understood what I'm doing. And today, because you asked, where am I today? Um, I don't really work in my business any much anymore. Um, my husband actually runs the business. He was able to leave his corporate job. So he runs the business day to day. He really enjoys it. Um, this is his third year with the company. And I focus on my con growing my consulting business because that's what I want to do now is I want to be able to help people who were just like me, who struggled, um, didn't know what the answers were. And, you know, like my mission truly is to help as many people as I can. Well, that is awesome. And that's awesome. I'm saying Paul August is made a comment and he was our guest yesterday and he said he tried to sell his business for thirty thousand dollars early on when things were failing wow i would have taken thirty thousand and ran <laughs> <laughs> really so, far away that some scary happen. times though scary scary times like it's yeah. easy to laugh about it now right we're all laughing oh isn't that oh. funny yeah, when you're, when you're living yeah. through it, it's very painful. And, I, and I'm going to say, like, it, it it cost me everything. Like, everything that I had, like, made and, and built up until that point, like, my husband and I both had very successful careers. Um, we had saved a lot of money. We moved to Florida. Like, we had this new life. And we came here. And I literally depleted our bank account. Like, depleted it. We had to short sell our home. We had no money. We we were broke and our marriage was this close to ending. And um, um, just by the grace of God, we, we figured it. I mean, it was just perfect timing to finally figure out like a little bit about how to fix the business. And just I don't know. I, I don't want to call it luck because it wasn't luck. I mean, hope is not a strategy. You literally have to dig in and figure it out because hope is not. Yeah. a strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you got to be doing something. You got to be taking some action. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even inaction is action, right? So even inaction is action. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. So, so tell us how, how did you do it, Carrie? What was your, or, or, or what should we do? I mean, a lot of us are kind of in the same boat now, maybe, maybe not quite that dire, maybe not that severe, but I know a lot of people are really struggling right now and they're scared and, they don't know, you know, the future is really, you know, scary for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, so I did a, I actually did a, a presentation. I don't know if it was four weeks ago, six weeks ago, all my weeks are blending in, but I did a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you say that all the time. Yeah. Day, I don't it? know. I don't know. <laughs> but the topic was how to pivot during an economic crisis. And here's the whole thing about our industry. You don't truly need to pivot. You don't because cleaning is never going away. I don't care what anybody says. People don't want to clean their homes. So until we have robots, right? Until there are robots that are cleaning homes. And they are coming. They are coming. They are coming. But until that happens, people are willing to pay for house cleaning service. They are willing and able just like your graph showed, Tom, there's money, there's pent up money that people are willing to spend. And if they have something they want, because people buy what they want, not what they need. That's a, that's a tip. People buy what they want, not what they need. People want to have cleaning service. They don't need it, but they want it. And people buy what they want, not what they need. I think so, that's awesome that, that that you made that statement because we've had these discussions over the last few months about, you know, I need to get into the food delivery business. I need to get into and and like diversify and get into like Ghostbuster suits and fogging and it's like, hey, yeah. let's stick to our knitting. We we're good at something, and the demand's not going away. It's not going away. Now it was uh, the temporary shutdown 
you know, was a, like this dormant time period. I don't know, what, six weeks, eight weeks, maybe 12 weeks if you're in New York. I mean, depending upon where you are. But we all just had to grin and bear it. And we did too. I mean, I'm in Florida. We shut down for a couple of weeks. And it's, it, it's, I mean, it's not what we wanted to happen, but you just have to accept it because you just, you just accept it and you move on. You cannot dwell on the past because the longer you dwell on that, on the negativity, the longer it's going to take you to pull out and, and get to a point where you're able to like thrive, you know? So um, the whole thing about our industry is you don't have to change your business but the marketing around your business has to change. So that's what I see different about the world that we live in today. Like your marketing has to change. It's not, we don't live in the same economy that we did before the pandemic, right? So like, it's like before yeah. the pandemic, we could say in our marketing, we could say, um, never clean your home again, or uh, we create free time for busy people the messaging was all around free time like because that's what we do we give people back their free time but now the messaging really has to be geared towards keeping them safe because that's what's most important now to them to your customer is that they want to know that you're going to keep like keep them and their family safe so that was one of my 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 tips or what i sent you tom was you have to make sure that you're putting together marketing that speaks to them because their concern right now in this economy is I don't want to get COVID, right? I don't, I don't want strangers in my home, but I want my house clean. So I'm, how can this company keep me safe? And so your job as the owner of the business is to make sure that you're, you're being upfront and, and honest about, Here's what we're going to do for you. We've got this. We're going to wear gloves. We're going to wear masks. We're going to wear shoe covers. And then after every job, we're going to disinfect our car. We're going to clean our equipment and whatever it is, whatever protocols that you're taking, you have to make sure that you're telling your customer it's for them because the customer's looking at it from their standpoint saying, what's in it for me? The whole with them, W I F M what's in it for me. What are you going to do for me? to make sure that I'm safe, that you're keeping me safe. So that's the new world that we live in. Hey, Tom, can you share um, Carrie's slide? Sure. That'd be helpful. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, and, and here's the deal. Carrie keeps saying that you have to do this stuff. No, you don't. You can just watch your business decline, right? Hey. But but right now we all have to do something a little bit different. And, and when people are talking about pivot, sometimes this is what they're talking about, you know, pivot in your marketing, maybe, you know, pivot right. with your message. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to put on the ghostbuster suit. You, right. you, there's other things to do, but right. there's going to have to change. Can't keep doing business the same way you did it before because things are different today. This is right. a different there's different need now that needs to be filled. Correct. We live in a completely different economy. Like if you, even if you don't want to accept it and say like, you know, how everybody keeps saying the new normal, the new normal. And I hate it when people say the new normal, <laughs> but the reality is, is business as we know it today is not the same as it was before the pandemic. It's not the same. I mean, you go to the grocery store and people are wearing masks. Did that happen before the before COVID? If it Never. feels more like the new abnormal, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the new abnormal. Yes. So, uh, hey, Carrie, Denise is on here, and uh, she's one of our regulars on Smart Business Moves, and she wants to know the name of your business. Made Brigade of Tampa Bay. There you go, Denise. And I don't know if you can see the comments, Carrie, no. but um, Alonzo is saying that Carrie always brings it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alonzo, Alonzo and I are, we, Alonzo and I need to get our own cleaning business today show. We're, we're, we're the dynamic duo too. So. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Well, we, we had him on on Tuesday yes, and he'll I be on again next Tuesday. So, you know, maybe, maybe we have to figure something out, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. we need a- Maybe, a, maybe we can take a day, can I take a day off, Liz? <laughs> 
Uh, uh, Carol, you want to fill in? I did. I just get kicked out of my position. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. So okay. As far as um, again, when we talked about pivoting your marketing message, you want to make sure that you're pivoting towards again. The customer needs to know that you're keeping them safe. So you don't have to use the D word, which is disinfection. I know that everyone's like, but I don't disinfect. And that's fine. You don't have to disinfect. If, if you don't disinfect, you want to at least sanitize and tell them what you're doing. So the reason I wanted you to show this slide is because just like Geico says 10 minutes or less, uh, what do they say? 10 minutes or less and you can save 10%. You want to make sure that you have some sort of marketing slogan that customers will remember. So, you know, like you do this to set yourself apart and especially right now during the pandemic, you want to have something that they're going to remember. So for me, I created the 10 point disinfection because it's something quick that people will remember. And when we tell them what we do, it's like, oh, that's that's cool. You're disinfecting all my high touch points throughout my home. So maybe you call it a six point sanitization or six step sanitization or 25 step sanitization. You have to create some sort of marketing slogan that you can use in your marketing as well as communicate to your customers over the phone or in person. Again, these are tips that you can use to set your set yourself apart from your competition. And like you said, Liz, you don't have to do it right. Like, sure, you don't have to do this step. But then, but then watch everybody else do it and see what happens to their business versus your business. Yeah. And really, most of us are of the mindset that we want to be leading the trends, not following the trends. Right. Right. And so th th this is a great opportunity for us and on our industry to, to, to lead part of where this is going to go. So. Right. And we touched on this a little bit ago where I said, you know, from my standpoint, I was really hoping that we could no longer say the C word, which is COVID. Like I was really hoping that that would be stripped from our vernacular, like in August, that was my wish, but it's not going away. Yeah. So if there is a round two, which is what they're telling us, then we have to be more prepared than ever for this next wave. I mean, I don't think we're going to shut down the economy again, but you need to figure out in your business how you can create an opportunity out of a crisis. Because trust me, people, even in the cleaning industry, are getting rich from this crisis. That's true. Yeah. This particular slide that we're looking at here, Carrie, I, I like this piece a lot, even though Liz is scared by the uh, picture <laughs> virus there. It's just a picture, Liz. It's okay. It, it won't hurt you. Thank um, you, Tom. Thanks for the reminder. Is this, how are you using this? Is this a mail piece? Is this on your website, social media? What do you do with this? Yeah. Um, do, do I have another slide, Tom, that shows my website? Uh, I got a Before this or after this? I don't know. Yeah, you want me to just take it from the top? You want to go through this deck? No, I, it would be too boring. <laughs> well, we can go fast. We can go fast. Just tell us, stop there. There. Oh, there. Actually, I, yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that I did early on, right when COVID happened, um, is I had this button, and it's no longer there because um, in my head, I thought, again, I was wishing it away. I was wishing away COVID in my head. So the button is no longer there. However, the link is still there. So the point I'm trying to make is like, you have to address the elephant in the room and the elephant in the room is COVID-19. So in my marketing, I talk about our response to COVID-19, meaning the protocols my company has initiated implemented, you know, because of COVID-19. So for example, you know, we don't gather in groups anymore. I've, I've got 30 employees who come into the office every morning. We have, staggered start times now and not everyone is allowed to come inside so that was a protocol that we implemented we're also disinfecting um, our equipment um, in between cleanings we're 
wearing gloves, we're wearing masks, we're wearing shoe covers. So I had this button in response to COVID-19 front and center on my website because it was that important that people needed to know that, again, it's not about us. And here's what I want to say about, um, about um, your website. Your website isn't about you. So the whole we word, which I use way too much on my website, isn't it, your website and what you do, it, it's not about you, it's about them. So the reason that you wanna have something about COVID-19, again, it's because it's about them, the customer, how you're protecting them. So you asked about marketing. I have it on my website. We also use it in some of our marketing material. Um, so for example, when people quit, canceled service with us because of COVID, we created a little um, flyer and on that flyer, it talked about our 10 point disinfection and again, how it's keeping them safe. So everything in our marketing, especially if you call us over the phone, is about how we're keeping you safe. Awesome. Well, Carrie, you know what? I wanted to get you on uh, this um, program with us because, like I said, one of the things that I know a lot of people really, really admire about you is that you keep it real. You know, you you say all of the stuff. So. I feel like this is really just an extension of who you are, that you're willing to talk about the bad stuff too and the scary stuff and address it. And it's not as bad when you talk about it and you get out there. That it, it reduces the, the angst that people feel when you talk about it. Absolutely. Um, and I'll tell you this, early on when COVID happened and you know, like major cities were being shut down, like Tampa, I live in the city of Tampa and, and our mayor um, had the, the city shut down and the stay at home order. Early on, I used this as a strategy to get people to not cancel. So we, when, when we were calling people to confirm appointments, we would say, by the way, Mrs. Smith, we've implemented a new uh, strategy in our office. So from now on, every cleaning includes our 10 point disinfection. That got so many people not like, they changed their mind and did not cancel because we actually have a uh, electrostatic uh, disinfection. We have the, e the E-mist. Mm -hmm. And so when they saw that that was something that was actually, again, a benefit to them, they didn't cancel their service. So I use this from a strategy standpoint to prevent cancellations. Yeah. It's awesome. And it worked. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think a lot that sometimes we forget that really, really critical little piece about marketing is does it work or doesn't it? Because right. a lot of times people are like, but I love it. It's so pretty. It's so <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but did it work? So I love that you said it worked. It worked. It's worked. So, so Carrie, your your mayor shut your your city down. Did that mean that you had to close your business for a period of time? We did. We um, we closed for two weeks, and during that two weeks, um, my husband and I, my kids, our office staff, we took that time to clean all of our cars. We have thirteen cars every piece of equipment we have got like 30 plus vacuums so we did a complete overhaul on all of our equipment all of our vehicles um you see that i updated the marketing i mean we we used it as an opportunity like to improve our operations we took that time to actually get better you know so um even though we were shut down, we worked our tails off. We were able to get everyone back. So we were lucky enough that it was an only, from our standpoint, a two week shutdown. All of our employees, except I think two early on, chose not to come back. But, but to date, everybody has come back. Everyone has returned. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you haven't, I haven't heard that much. I have heard one other business that is, um, doing better than they were pre-COVID, uh, but that's rare for sure. So Carrie, one of the things that you said you're going to talk about is you're going to tell us the three things that we could start doing right now, right? I'm guessing one is change our messaging. Right. What, what are some other things that we need to be doing? 
So I kind of already touched upon it. Um, but um, yeah, one of them is definitely to research how things have changed. So the first thing that I did in as part of my research is to look at my Google ads. So for anyone who does their own Google ads, and even if you don't do your own Google ads, that's the best research you could possibly do for your business. It shows you everything. So Tom, I'm sure that when this happened, you looked early on to see what words people like what keywords people were searching or mm -hmm. because it, it shows you everything that you need to know about your business. It really does. My keywords went from searching, researching, um, or people were looking up house cleaning maid service to never like I didn't even see those words. All I saw was disinfect, um, virus, how to, how to kill the virus. Everything was about the virus. So I had to then change all of my Google AdWords to base. I, I pivoted that marketing message towards what people were searching. So that's one way is that you've got, you got to do the research and you've got to change your Google AdWords accordingly. You can't just keep it the same. Yeah, I think that's great too, Carrie, because one thing that we found consistently is the one, the one consistent thing that we really have found is what works in one area is not necessarily working in another area. So yeah. really you have to do your own research and find yeah. out what is working in your area. What, what is going to matter? What I love that, you know, what yeah. are the key that are being searched? Right. And so like you're in Washington, you know, yeah. your state is in a completely different situation than a lot of us on the other side of the country. So and even, I mean, I don't even, I'm sure all the states have opened back up, but the phases, we're all in different phases of where we are from the, from an economy standpoint too. So what works in my, my state, my industry, my market is different for your market. So you really have to see, you have to do the research for your market to see what's changed and then how you need to change in accordance with what's happening in your market. And yeah, in this very rapidly changing, I'll double dip here, unprecedented time, <laughs> um, you know, what worked maybe a month and a half ago might not be working now. I know that we have uh, some articles on cleaning business today that talk about disinfection. And when we were just looking at the analytics, I mean, those articles are just like blowing up in terms of, of, of the traffic they were getting. Eh, not so much now. You know, I think that a right. lot of scare is kind of, you know, people have moved on. So, um, you know, when you're looking at your AdWords and seeing what people are searching for, that's something that you probably would need to be watching more regularly, more closely in this dynamic time that when you would under more normal times. Right. So even though I brought that up as a step, like you need one to re want to research, you really always need to be looking because that's going to show you everything that you need to see about your business. So you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's not just a one-time thing. It's really continuous. So that's the step one, uh, Liz was, was research. The number two is to make sure you tell customers how you're taking care of them. Again, going back to my website example, it's not about, it's not about you as the business. It's about them, the customer. So the customer, um, new customers and old customers, when they think about your business, they don't think about you. They think about themselves. Like what's in it for me, the whole with them thing. And they always think that. So me as a business owner, I'm always thinking, what is my customer thinking? It's not about me. It's about my customer. So I have to make sure my website is about them. What's in it for them? How am I keeping them safe? And From then, their not, right. from, not from our perspective, but from not right. what we're doing to keep you safe, what you'll see from our company, why you're going to feel safe. Right. This is why That's you'll right. feel safe, why why we're safer than the other person down the street. It's right. really hard. I mean, you can go really quick from, I mean, I could just flip flop in my own brain within, you know, five seconds. I'm like, yeah, it has to be all about them. So I'm going to tell them what we're doing. Oh, stop, Liz. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and I mean, sometimes for me, like I have some, I've been in business now 13 years. And so I will literally pick up the phone and call some of my long-term customers and just ask them like, what, 
What do you want? What do I need to do during this time? And they'll tell you. So that's yeah, the so thing. Like you are not your customer. Your customer is your customer. So if you don't know what they want, just ask them and they'll tell you. That's the oh, you, thing. You just gave me a great idea, Carrie. So something that I haven't done in a while is a focus group. And focus groups are awesome. And how much easier is a focus group right now? Yeah, because sure. people don't want to go anywhere in a group. You could do a focus group, or I could, yeah. can, will do a focus group on Ring Central or Zoom or whatever platform. Yeah. Send people a little something easy. You know, I'm some disinfectant. Yeah. Right? right. And they'll do a focus group. That's great have not done that in a while and, and and that's been something that i've really been lacking so I haven't, I haven't done it in a while either but i i have picked up the phone and literally called some of my long time term customers and just said you know like what do i what do we need to do to make sure that you know you're satisfied what can we do and and they'll tell you they will literally tell you that's so awesome yeah yeah so, so then awesome. the number three so we've gone through two and the yeah. number three is to make sure that you're you're modifying your marketing so it's it's some sort of slogan. So going back to Geico, 10 minutes or less can save you 10% or more on your home insurance. I think that's what their marketing message is. You need to do the same thing when it comes to COVID. Are you going to do a 10-point disinfection or a six-step sanitization? You have to have something that's quick and rememberable in your marketing. It, you have to be able to do something like this. So um, again, for our, from our standpoint, it saved customers. It was, it was a customer retention strategy. Okay. That's awesome. I mean, I, I know, I think everybody knows the power of a good slogan and, and that yeah. they do have to change over time. And right now, um, finding one that, that is going to stick makes really good sense. Yeah. Um, you were talking about the, the Geico and I have never heard that one, but when you oh, were really? talking about it, I, I definitely heard the, in my head, I heard 30 minutes are free. Domino's delivers. Yeah. Domino's. So, yep. Yeah, that's their offer. Yeah. Domino's. That's their core business strategy is 30 minutes yeah. or less or it's free. And yeah. you know, the funny part about it is I think they stopped doing that a number of years ago. Oh, really? I still expect it in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Because That's some good marketing, right? There, was, there were like too many accidents were happening and people oh. were dying and they were getting sued for creating. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Way to way to bring the crowd down, Tom. Good job. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. That's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to hear what everybody's slogans are. Here's Leslie's. We use science to clean for health. That's awesome. I really love that, Leslie. And right, she says she's been using it for 15 years, but boy, it's packing a punch today, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's really awesome. You've, you've been waiting 15 years for COVID. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she saw it coming. <laughs> yeah, that's actually awesome. I mean, could that be any better? It's almost like COVID came for you. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Who else has an awesome slogan? I would love to hear some other slogans if you have one. And if you don't, Start getting one now because you guys can hear that. That's some some right. great great advice there. And I love that. Put it on your website. It's gotta it's gotta go there. Again, it's all about the customer, how you're addressing COVID and keeping them safe, and then again, some sort of slogan around whatever it is that you're doing, disinfection, sanitization. I mean, whatever it is. So and yeah, that's the big topic. I'm sure Paul Freed talked about it on. You said was he on Monday? Monday. Okay. Sanitization. Um, he didn't talk too much about sanitization this time. He was showing us like, um, like how you can use just a unique idea to do whatever it is that you want to do. You don't have to do traditional marketing. You can okay. do, you know, anything if you have a great idea. He just showed us the. Uh, so you know, many different amazing things. Marketing techniques he's used over the years and. He like did it on his uh, cell phone. So he was able to walk around, walk outside, talked about all the times he's gotten in trouble, kicked out of events and all the, you know, just <laughs> Paul's on the edge, you know. I'll have to catch that. It was fun. All right, so we've got we've got some slogans here. We've got Penny's personal touch. 
we put the personal touch in clean. All right, I wonder if you can pivot that message just the tiniest bit to add in some safety or uh -huh. I don't know what it is. I like your alliteration. I like that you're using that alliteration. I wonder if you can you know, capitalize on that even a little bit more. Uh, Marlo, mine isn't science related, but it's you deserve the comfort of a clean home. Mm -hmm. You know that people do want to feel comfortable in their own homes right now. Right. And that has a different connotation today than it did six months ago. Mm -hmm. Six months ago, that had a completely different meaning. Um, Diane says, we make your house feel loved. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, what do Rosemary, the difference is in the details. Nice. Cleaning for your health and peace of mind, Linda has. That's a good one. Yeah, that is really good. Oh, well, Marlowe's, duh, Marlowe's makes perfect sense too, right? Oh, gosh, yeah, you, gosh, you can capitalize this. Her, her company name is Deserved Comfort. That's the name of the company. And then you deserve the comfort of a clean home. Very nice. Yeah. yeah so uh, I mean, you just have to make sure that you have some sort of, you know, what do you want to call it? Slogan or, or whatever it is, just some sort of marketing message that people will remember. And, and that's, that's a competitive advantage too, because more than likely your, your competitor is not doing that. So when people can remember you based upon your marketing slogan, it, it definitely gives you a competitive advantage. So would you say, Carrie, that um, the, the, the slogan is more important than like the visual aspect? Because when I look at your, your ad here, this, this page, I'm like, wow, that's, that's really impactful, right? That's powerful. Just, I don't even have to read it. I don't even need to know what the 10 points are. <laughs> and I feel like that's a really powerful ad. So do you think that the, the message is more important or, you know, is it important to get a really good graphic designer to create something for you? What do you, what do you think about that? I think the message is more important. Um, and that's just marketing. I mean, again, you remember good marketing. It doesn't really matter how good the quality or the graphics quality is because it's the, it's the, the marketing message that sells. So um, if people are looking, I mean, from my standpoint, I don't hire like expensive graphics people or, or an agency or anything like that. I use a lot of like um, one-off services like fiverr.com. I don't know if you guys have ever used Fiverr. I love Fiverr. You can literally get something like this for fifteen dollars. So, I mean, I hate to like cheapen cheapen the quality, like, you know, the service, but it's really simple now. Uh, not for me. I'm not a graphics person. I know what I want, and I'm willing to pay for it. But um, I fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. Uh, um, but yeah, you have to put the marketing together. So I've studied marketing like over the last three years now. I mean, that's, that's just what I enjoy. That's the part of the business that I enjoy the most. So, um, I know you guys probably have your favorite part of the business. Um, but yeah, my, yeah, mine is definitely marketing and that's what I enjoy the most. So that's where I spend the most time. Well, next week, I know you're doing, um, you're doing like a class for the entire week. Is it going to focus heavily on marketing? What's happening there? Yes. So I am actually, um, this is my first time I'm teaching this class. I'm, I'm teaching the, um, if you want to take this off the screen, Tom, you can. I'm teaching what I call the boss framework. So I call myself the cleaning boss, as you can see behind me. Um, I teach a unique approach to getting bi-weekly customers. So the B stands for bi-weekly. The O stands for offer, because that's what I teach people how to do, not compete on price, instead create an offer. Um, S is for scarcity and urgency, which you use in your marketing message. The other S is on social proof, which are Google reviews. So for me, that framework is what allows you to grow your business. Like, do you follow these steps I can guarantee you that you will 2x your business if you follow this, these steps. So I te I'm teaching exactly how to do it and how to implement it inside your business. 2x in what amount of time? I don't, um, I'm trying to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm just um, 
Gosh, I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, yeah. I have an easier question. It's, it's, it's have, so many different things, what market you're in. And, and actually, yeah, you're right. so, much it, so much of it depends upon how big your business is, right? Because if you're a brand yeah. new business, you can get there a lot quicker than if you're a more mature business. Right. Um, I mean, for our, for we follow this framework in our business. And so the funny part of this, I'm going to I'm gonna share with you guys is, is about two years ago when I put this framework together and we implement it in my business and we've done so many things with it. And I, and I've gone on to teach, I'm part of a franchise. I've taught everyone the franchise. Um, so it's funny when COVID happened, I, I hit the panic button real, real like soon, like right at the beginning. And my husband looked at me, he's like, what, why are you panicking? Like you've created a framework. Like we've just followed this framework and we're good. Like we've just, you've created this system. We're not going to deviate from the system because it works. You've proven that it works. Why are you panicking? And I'm more emotional. Like I get emotional about things. He's not emotional. He's more like he's factual and makes decisions based, based on facts. And so like for him, it was like, yeah, we're, we're all right. You've proved, we've proven that this works. So that's what was funny. Yeah. That I panicked and I already had a framework. <laughs> we have some questions that are going to um, take us off just slightly, but hopefully we'll be bring back again is today in my mastermind group, we did a deep dive on a company. And one of the questions that she was struggling with was um, how to get more biweekly customers because, or to convert them. Because she gets a lot of jobs, she can close jobs like, like clockwork. She's in New York, fairly large company, but they get a lot of one-time claims. And so she really wants to um, convert them better to biweekly. Do you think your course would be helpful for somebody that has that particular issue? 100%, um, but I'll tell you, her biggest problem is her mindset. As you know, I mean, it's her mindset. So everyone tells me, oh, I can't get by week because I just get one times. And I say, bull, bull crap. It's not true. It's because you're leading them down that path. You're not in your mind saying, this is a biweekly customer and I'm, I, I can show you how to do it. I mean, we've done it in our office. Um, it's how so she, she will need that. She so when she, when we were talking and she walked us through, she absolutely can sell. I was like, I right. feel like you are selling biweekly. What what's what's different there? When I'm hearing you, she's like, well, yeah, my close rate is great, but my people, I'm like, well, teach them to do what you're doing because <laughs> that's good. She's like, I do. They have a script, but. They don't, they only get one time. So I'm thinking it's something along what you're saying, right? Her people aren't, they don't believe it. They don't believe that they can close those by easily. This with Made Central, this pops up uh, from time to time. It came up in, a, in our weekly meeting today. And it's like, we really need a way to track our one-time leads from our recurring leads. And it's like, as you said, Carrie, bullcrap. We don't do that. We're not going to do that. Every lead has an opportunity or the largest part of your leads have an opportunity to become recurring business. And if you go into it with the mindset of, you know, it's a, it's a one-time lead, then basically you aren't selling. You don't have a sales department. You're just taking orders. Correct. Yeah. What I mean, think? all yeah. of us are business. Like we're all entrepreneurs. We all have businesses. Here's the whole thing. You cannot sell a business with one-time customers. It's not a business. You have to have regular repeat bi-weekly because I don't want monthlies. <laughs> I mean, if you have to get month, that's a whole separate topic, but you don't have a long-term sustainable business if you don't have bi-weekly customers. Let me, let so, me ask you this, Carrie, not, not to but you've been in this business for a while. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed a, a, a just preference? I mean, I've been doing this for, for a while and it used to be a lot easier to get a weekly customer it is now. And oh my God. That, yeah. that it moves out where more people want to go monthly than say, say go by weekly. Like in the old days, monthlies were rare and you had a lot more weeklies and still the, the bi-weeklies were the lion's share. And Liz, you're not in your head? Yeah, I was totally. We used to be 80% bi-weekly, you know, 5% was monthly and 15% weekly. Still bi-weekly with lion's share. 
but we had a lot more more weekly and very few of the of the monthly but boy what, that did us. what's your mix today liz um we have 70 percent bi-weekly that's really good though 20 percent 20 more 25 i think monthly and i think it's like four percent uh weekly and and holding on to those is like hard right. i mean that and that's the last time i even looked at it was months ago so for all i know it's even worse right and that's why when people say to me well carrie shouldn't i focus on weekly because that's the most money i'm like yeah good luck with that i mean I know, number, right yeah <laughs> number one that's like a completely different customer um they're like a unicorn they just kind of really don't exist very much um but number two they're not loyal you like you just touched upon they leave for any small nuance and and they are very comfortable in their weekly relationship with you that they're very quick to say oh i don't need you for the next three weeks but come after that or whatever i mean they're just that's a whole different customer. I would prefer a bi-weekly. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say this out loud, but I would prefer a bi-weekly over a weekly. It's just a better customer. I don't know. They just really are mm. a better customer. Yeah. They're more, they're more loyal. They're happier. Um, they stay longer. I mean, I have a handful mm -hmm. of employees that I love who've been with us for years and years. But when I get a weekly, I don't get overly excited because they just don't stay very long. And it's not quality related. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like our weeklies kind of, I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't looked into it enough and I haven't looked at it, the numbers recently. So the, I, <laughs> I do the same as you. I just look at the bi-weekly. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like I'm just watching that bi-weekly number. I don't want that to drop. And and we have a thing that Derek created called the point system where every customer has a point. Like so a weekly customer. Oh, that's really awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm looking at those points. So I don't want to drop points. If I lose a weekly customer, I lose four points. But if I lose a monthly customer, one point. Right. You know, so so I don't know. I, I the tracking those points kind of really matters to me too, and that really focuses in on those bi-weeklies a lot. You kind of. So I just I know we're getting close to time here, but I just wanted to wrap up and just tell you guys the secret strategy to share with everybody that the secret stat strategy for getting more bi-weekly customers is to make them an offer they can't refuse. So like Disney World does this to you, and you don't even realize it. Like you can't call Disney and plan a vacation for one day you literally will be upsold to five days staying in their hotel with character breakfast, with an upsell package for their meals and everything else, spend thousands of dollars <laughs> more and you walk away happier because you think that you got a better deal even though you spent thousands more. So it's the same. That's how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> true, it's totally true. It's, it's the same strategy that you have to use in your yeah. business. Carrie, if you want to know more about your program next week, how do we find that? Where do we go? Um, how do you sign up? Yeah, how do you sign up? Okay, so I did a webinar last week and people registered at how to grow a million dollar cleaning business.com. If you want to see the offer, it would be how to grow a million dollar cleaning business.com forward slash offer. Offer. Okay. How to grow a million cleaning dollar business. That URL is way too long. How to grow a million dollar cleaning business dot com forward slash offer. O F F E R. That should take you into my sales page, which tells you about the cleaning, the five day cleaning boss challenge. Oh, Carrie, I can't believe you were able to buy that URL. It was available. How, but it's long. How to grow a million dollar cleaning business. I'm goofing. Right? Uh, he, he's goofing. I'm getting, hey, I'm getting, um, back, for, I'm getting back for the uh, dress uh, thing. That you're yeah, dress <laughs> comment. That was pretty good. Um, Bill <laughs> wants to make sure that you're appreciating him, Bill Gelderman, because he's reminding you that he's a bi-weekly customer. We love you, Bill. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the best. In a lot, <laughs> a lot of ways. Five points, Bill. Five points. <laughs> <laughs> 
we, we, we love you. We, we love you regardless of who's cleaning your home, but maybe we love you more because of you. I don't know. We appreciate your business. So thank you. Hey, you better watch out there, Tom. All right. So, Tom, oh. you also said you were going to share the um, Clean Business Today link today. Yep. Oh, yay. So, this is uh, Carrie's website with the offer. I dropped the URL and the um, thing. There, you know the drill, guys. We've been doing this. Long I love now. your background, Carrie. That's so cute. Yeah, I thought it was just. I mean, I came up with a cleaning boss. It's just I'm kind of bossy, just a little. <laughs> That's nice. I like real, it. Real quick, we're we're against the hour here. Cleaningbusinessday.com. You want to subscribe, and if you haven't, you do want to subscribe. Email, first name, last name. Doesn't get any easier. Doesn't cost you anything, and you're in the loop and the latest of everything that we're doing here. You're part of the family. You're part of the ecosystem. Go all the way down here to the bottom. Paul was so kind to hook us up with his FAQ scripts. So you just click on that. And you can download that. And this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the uh, Q&A that we saw in the videos and his website, which were so awesome yesterday. Thank you, Paul. But we do need to be clear. It's very, very important, you guys, that when you do this, that you do not follow it word word for word because that will mess up the the um, search engines for everybody. So yeah. take take it and modify it and make it make it your own. It's a good point. And don't say that you're a cleaning company in Massachusetts if you're not. Yes, please don't do that. <laughs> Okay, great. That's great, Tom. Thanks for that. And thank. You're welcome, Paula. Thank you so much. What are we doing tomorrow, Liz? Uh, what are we doing tomorrow, Tom? Friday. What is Friday? I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm on the spot. Oh, uh, you put me on the spot, Tom. Why do you have to go and do that? It's a rapid fire Q&A session where you get to ask questions, and Liz, myself, and our super secret special guest who You'll find out this time, well, 23 hours from now, um, who's going to be. And it's a lot of fun. We did it last week for the first time. And and Paul Freed was part of that. So Paul was like, I think he's probably the first back-to-back -back guest we've ever had, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anywho, um, do you have a hint? Another hint, Liz, as to who our special I do. Um, I'm not going to give you a hint that you can guess really easily. You're all thinking I'm going to, right? It's Thursday. I'm not. But I'll tell you, she has amazing hair. She has amazing hair. I'll take you. I mean, I'm sure she does. Well, you'll see tomorrow because she flips it a lot. <laughs> You're going to see. It's nice hair. You'll hair. all agree with me. You were awesome. Shared yeah, valuable so information. Much. I was taking notes. I mean, Me too. You know, honestly, you say like, how do we, you know, do this every every day? Yeah. It's like I'm. That's how. I'm learning so much about how to run a cleaning business. I love you doing this. But yeah. here's here's the interesting part. I I don't like anything about the well. I do like the revenue part of the cleaning business. Like the cleaning <laughs> stuff. I have no interest in that. Like my husband does all that. I love the marketing. So that's where I thrive. And so when people are talking about cleaning, I like tune out because that's just not what I'm interested in. <laughs> but you know, that's why your marriage lasted through that rough spot, right? You guys really balance each other it's and true. you really complement each other. So that's awesome. Your initials, MM. Ooh. I no, no, they're not. Oh, so I know who you're thinking of. Good guess, but that's not her. You forgot some of the other clothes. You forgot how little she is. And you would bet on her? Bet on her. You would bet on her every day. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank all right. We're out of here, y'all. We'll question. see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks so much, Carrie. Really appreciate it. Bye.